dear brothers and sisters praise the lord and a warm welcome to one and all of you to this uh, series where we are dealing through this law of uncleanliness and uh, this law of uncleanliness is a topic which is not something that is very easy um, however when i say it's not very easy why because it's a very comprehensive topic right so anything and everything that is inappropriate in the sight of god anything and everything that is unrighteous in the sight of god yeah there is a whole bunch of things that could be excavated that could be researched that could be analyzed that could be eliminated and uh, that's all about it right so if we eliminate those things yeah we become like god there is a lot of god's character and god's quality in us and there is uh, the presence of the evil spirits or the demons or the unclean spirits that once used to dwell inside of us is nullified so we all become like christ and we all become like god right but we are not going to be above god <laughs> the moment you get that kind of attitude then certainly you know you still have some demons living in you hmm? that's the attitude of pride and the attitude of pride leads you away from god right so we had been um going through various scriptures as from the time we kicked off the series we have started with mark 5 1 to 20 jesus uh, cleanses a person or heals a person from the demon possession of unclean spirits and then we went to leviticus 11 we spoke through the discrimination of clean and unclean foods and how the old covenant way of looking at the same topic is being um and uh, is also narratively explained in the series and then we went all the way to acts 10 11 and few other topics also we covered and especially the gentiles how they got the grace because according to the jewish standards the gentiles are unclean there is god uh, cleansed us and he called unclean as clean and uh, that that's the privilege you and i have um to be called as the believers in Christ and there is no other reason behind it yeah what uh, the world called us uh, unclean uh, god calls us clean right world means i'm referring to the jewish uh, tradition the jewish culture and we discussed about that and then we moved again back to leviticus 12 and 13 and 14 15 we want to read all of those and we start to look little bit from the ceremonial practices and also from the um, external um, practices in the sense certain discharges that comes from the body of human beings both male and female respectively are called as unclean and how god cleanses them what is the remedy and how uh, you could go through the uh, the cleansing process no while we were discussing that you know immediately after the birth of the child and discharges in the the sexual uh, discharges and stuff like that and sorry discharges from the sexual organs right um, also we spoke from that perspective and then we moved all the way to 1 corinthians 7 where we had spent uh, enough time already um, to deal with this law of marriage right and what are the different aspects that could uh separate us from the love of god and also what are the different parameters within this um within, within this married married life uh, that could also separate couple husband from wife and wife from husband and how they get into all sorts of misapprehensions and and how let's see this entire episode to what we are kicked off uh, within this law of uh, uncleanness series right um i think past five or six chapters it's all about uh, second episode how the deeds that the deeds of our life and the actions of our uh, body and all those things could could be an offense to god sometimes we do it knowingly sometimes you 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 ask honestly any believer in christ they would say i didn't even know brother this is an offense to god and that's the reason why we are 
we have kicked off this series and we are taking the subject uh, very seriously and we are taking it to closure yeah and uh, you all have to understand this one aspect very clearly that it's not easy at all for anybody to clearly discriminate yeah the or to say we go through so many incidents and circumstances in life and we meet with people we have so many uh, problems to handle we have so many troubles that we need to overcome and there are a lot of troublemakers in our life all these things happens and um, what happens is it puts us in a very very uncomfortable situation if we don't even have the basic sense of um, you know discriminating between unclean things and clean things unclean things separates you from the love of god and clean things always unites you with the love of god and with the companionship of the holy spirit and that's where everything right every moment um, and i keep telling you this in in life it's all about decisions your being um, your life is full of decisions so every decision every decision you make is it going to pull you or rip you apart from god um, or it's going to get you one step closer yeah and when you walk in that conscience that that really really matters uh, how strong your spiritual journey is going to be and how i think that is the simple fact of the matter that the more you walk in such conscience uh, you, you know you, you get closer because you you definitely will get into such conscience and that's how king david walked you know he all he was a man of law he always consults the law and if he is not fully aware or confident then he calls the prophets like nathan or samuel and inquires god and um he himself is a prophet he inquires he inquires god can i go can i do this and all that the only incident where he did not <clears throat> inquire god was with this bathsheba incident otherwise that's why he is called um, as a man uh, whose heart is after god he neither turns to the left or to the right and he always uh, pays attention to what god speaks to him more than men talking to him yeah and that's why king david was a very very special person to god you and i can become like david don't you think so you you and i have uh, the presence of god and uh, you and i can become like him in fact we are more than david right he didn't see messiah he all, always had the visions and the prophecies psalm 22 he had written and you can also read couple of other psalms where he says that you know my own friend lifted his heel against me and all that uh, it, it also talks about messiah messianic prophecy or um, the sufferings that messiah would go through but he didn't have that privilege to hear jesus yeah not to, no, neither to see jesus we have not seen jesus but we can feel jesus and that's the presence the holy spirit is in us you will feel as if you know jesus is talking to you and jesus is within you how many of you have the doubt i don't have the doubt i am certainly assured that the presence of god is with me always but then when we go through certain trials in life that's where our faith is put to test and the faith is put to test by god not by the devil and that's where he allows the tempter to come and tempt us um to see how much you rush to god and ask god and consult god and allow god to lead you and ask for his protection ask for his guidance and most importantly are you being driven through the scriptures or by the scriptures right you immediately consult the word of god and allow the holy spirit to help you to bring the scriptures to your remembrance yeah john 14 uh, 26 you read you will understand he brings all the scriptures the teachings of jesus the admonishing words of jesus the advices of jesus to your remembrance and therefore you are able to deal um and and tackle the situation and you don't lose the presence of the holy spirit yeah and you are you are you are very very diligent so on the same lines we had been discussing from 1 corinthians 7 verses 1 to 16 we are already done I'm not going to get in there on the same lines we spoke about the law of marriage right if you are married or if you are going to get married then better you be aware right after marriage don't try to refer 1 Corinthians 7 oh it's like written like this or it's written like that or no it's too late for you that's where i also left behind a 
little request to all the pastors, the leaders of the church, elders of the church to coach your people, the teens, teenagers, and also the people who are very young, you know, who have become professionals and almost nearing the age of marriage. Call them up and conduct such sessions. Brief them what is married life. And it's not playful to choose your life partner through the skin colors and, you know, the looks and all that. It's, it's, it's to seek for your life partner from God. You know, Proverbs 31 verses 10 to 31 talks about the virtuous wife. Seek God. Yeah. Ask him to create that word as life and ask him to give that word as your life partner. Right. In the beginning, there was word and the word became flesh. John chapter 1 verse 9 or 10 says that. And the word was nothing but the 315. Genesis 315. The messianic prophecy was spoken about Jesus and the word became flesh when the time came. Similarly, yeah, the word of God talks about a virtuous wife and asks God to transform that word. As says the righteous, virtuous wife, the righteous wife. Seek it from, seek for, seek for that virtuous wife from the hands of God. Not through your eyes, not through the lust of your eyes. Yeah, you, you know nothing about the person, how she is going to be or how he is going to be 10 years from now, 20 years from now. And you leave that to God. I'm telling you, you all get in a rush to marry somebody because of the urgency, the hormonal urgencies, the lustful urgencies and stuff like that, sexual desires. It's not all about sex, you know, married life. Many people will have to understand this. At least half the people don't understand this. It's all about fulfilling the luxual, uh, sorry, sexual desires and that's why I get married. No, sorry. That's maybe one among the 10 other reasons but the remaining reasons are different. It's divine in the presence of God. You're getting children and you're taking care of your life, your wife and you're your wife. You have a responsibility to take care of your husband, right? Although he's the elder, uh, he's the head of the family. You have a responsibility to support him. Sisters, listen to me. And then both of you have a bigger responsibility to bring up your children. And then you are a blessing to the other people, other families. You live as testimonies for Christ. Those are the things which you really need to take an account very seriously and then, you know, and that's what we had discussed in the last few sessions. Now, in this, on the same lines, we will continue. Live as you are called. 1 Corinthians 7, 17 onwards, we will discuss, right? We are not yet done. And this is all part of the marriage life only or married life only. <clears throat> Right? Live as you are called. That's a, that's a very simple title. Right? Some people, they get into all extraordinary imaginations or unnecessary imaginations which are completely irrelevant or which are completely um, different or deviating from the original plan of God. Right? The original divine will and plan of God may be something. Whereas you had built up the thoughts on your own. And that's where, you know, always allowing God's presence to lead you versus what you imagine for God, right? Some people always, they give ideas to God. <laughs> no, Father, it's not like this. Why don't we do something like this? Yeah, that was uh, the mentality of Moses that he was not a listening type at the age of 40. He was, he was talking type. He was reacting type. He, of course, his attitude was all right. He, he understood, you know, God had called me as a deliverer, but he took it on himself. He did not go to God. He did not ask God the Father to lead him. He did not seek his advice. And that's what really did not allow God. God was not upset, but God can never be able to fulfill his divine will and plan. If you are not allowing him to work things for you and because he is, his wisdom is beyond our understanding, right? And it's beyond human imagination. And that's where you and I really need to allow God to, can you imagine how humble of a God is that he expects your permission and he needs your approval to work with you. And he doesn't do anything by force. But, but I don't think Moses was in that mindset. Neither he would understand what is this all about. Therefore, he sent him to wilderness 40 years. He broke him. And that Moses, who almost even forgot Aramic language and 
he, he forgot his call for God and divine will. He thought it's over. I'm just counting my days. He's already an eight-year-old man. And then God calls him, come here. Now is the right time. <coughs> yeah. You're, you're all ripen enough. You're matured enough. Yeah. You're humble enough. And you know what God did in him uh, through Moses. Yeah. There wasn't a prophet like him. God certifies him in Deuteronomy 34. Neither can be anybody like Moses. Moses is my beloved servant. And 3,000 years later, Jesus himself honors Moses again in the, in the, in the mount. Right? So, live as you are called, whereas you cooking up plants for God or you taking things on your own shoulders without consulting God or you assuming things or this is what God could have planned for me or you planning things for God and telling, advising God. That's exactly what Moses did, right? He, he planned already. I'm going to kill all the Egyptians one by one. And I'm going to kill them secretly. And I think his old generation, Moses, Moses and his child, Moses and his grandchildren. Maybe there are another 40, 50 generations. Even then also, I don't think they'll be able to defeat. But God said, come, I will execute the same plan, but in my ways. He split the Red Sea and he made all the Pharaoh's army to come and he buried them under the sea. One blow. Right? In one blow, Moses could kill only one man. But in one blow, God could kill all the men, all the choice men of Pharaoh's army and his chariots, horses, everything were buried in one blow. That's the difference between the human power versus God's power. That is the difference that makes between the human's wisdom and God's wisdom. You all understand what I'm saying? And that's why it's important to allow God to lead us as He how as how He had predestined to lead lead us, and how or uh, whatever He had thought for us, the divine will and plan, whatever He had thought for us when He had sent us into our mother's womb. Of course, God did not send us to send us to this earth uh, accidentally, right? All of us have been sent for a purpose and there are a lot of divine will and plan and purpose according to which God decides, okay, fine, you go there and I'm going to help you. And God is not going to disown us, right? He's, he's a very responsible person, God, right? Very sincere, very responsible, very faithful, very loyal. I mean, in fact, he himself is a role model for all these things and that's why he expects us to be like him. So live as you are called is a very good subject that all of us will have to understand and even otherwise also. Um, and even otherwise also from the concept of this um, marriage perspective, husbands try to be remaining as husbands. Don't play the role of a wife. Okay. And wives don't play the role of a husband. Controlling, dominating, contradicting. Why not like this? Why like this? Why you alone going to work? Let me also go to work. Go to work, but don't go in competition, right? You can you alone work? I also can work. Can't I earn? I also can earn. And then you are not giving the transparency to your husband. Why? Because I work hard, I earn. I, it's my money, let me spend. No, that's a wrong attitude. But as God has distributed to each one, as the Lord had called each one, so let him walk. And so I ordain in all the churches. Verse number 17, 1 Corinthians 7, 17 and verse 18. Was anyone called while circumcised? Let him not become uncircumcised. Was anyone called while uncircumcised? Let him not be uncircumcised. Let him not be circumcised. Circumcision is nothing and uncircumcision is also nothing. But keeping the commandments of God is what matters. Verse number 19. What Paul tells here is, see, in the, in the early age uh, churches, right, there, is a big, there was a big dispute happening for, for, for quite a long time. 
it all started from the cornelius incident acts, acts chapter 10 verses 11 sorry acts, acts chapter 10 and acts chapter 11 especially acts chapter 11 1 to 18 you take and read you will understand all the people were quarreling with peter how dare you enter into cornelius house and you sat with those unclean people gentiles and and all that and especially in uh, acts 11 10 and 11, acts chapter 11 verses 10 11 and 12 uh, where he says if god is ready to extend the repentance and grace and the anointing of the holy spirit which i had witnessed in my own eyes who am i to withstand god and all the people listened but then those were the bunch of people who listened but the other people the, ex- the extended part of the jewish community who were born again as believers in christ they were ready no so they were still not ready to accept the gentiles as one of those and that's where um, you see that you know um, <coughs> excuse me the dispute continues people were still quarreling with each other or misapprehensions there were a lot of people who uh, were still classifying circumcised people uncircumcised people and all that uh, why we are talking through here is why because whenever there comes a tensions between the husband and wife what happens husband starts talking about the wife's family members don't i know who was your father don't i know who is your mother you know what is their caste you know what is their culture uh, don't i know how your brother is look at that fellow and same wife also tells you know who is your father who is your mother what is your family all these things too late to talk right because you are already married <laughs> you could have if that was the if pricking in your eyes and heart you should have consulted on those lines first of all that is a sin to judge a person by his caste and culture and by his parents uh, status social status and economical status it's it's wrong to judge a person bible doesn't approve right because all are equal all are clean whomever i have sanctified and called for my name the only criteria is have they accepted christ and they are born again believers and accept them as how they are that's exactly what we are dealing through and when all this tensions happens between people i'm just taking marriage as one example but then these kind of disputes happens even within the church right in the church also there are a lot of casteism going on right one caste people they form one gang they don't mingle with other people or one uh, one language people right they don't mingle with other language people they will all want be one gang these all will be another gang it even it happens even today and you know what churches are even classified by languages right i'm not against languages regional languages needed right the local language they need to conduct services which is nice why because the local i speak in certain language but then when other language people come and become member of your church do not treat them distinctly right do not separate them do not say that you know they don't even know the local language and that's why that's why they've come to your church seeking that attention seeking that love seeking that help teach them the local language and get them on your side but don't judge them already and similarly in in married life also do not discriminate so i'm talking uh, for initially i started right how the dispute happens is uncircumcised people all became one gang and circumcised people all became one gang in the sense jewish people by their tradition and culture they are all circumcised and they have accepted christ they will all mingle never mingle with uncircumcised believers in christ because behind their brains the law of uncleanliness was still running they call them as unclean people or these guys no uncircumcised and they also eat all kind of foods and what is this they go by leviticus 11 that's where exactly god is trying to bring that correction and i have explained this multiple times at that point of time as early as leviticus uh, the book of leviticus was written it was necessary for god to introduce that discrimination between clean food and unclean food because that was the only means where he could separate people from paganite culture and paganite means of living their lives god didn't have any other way and that was the easy thing to do for god to educate these people and it was easy for them to understand too so on the same lines they have to have have start judging people and i'm i'm just um, you know connecting it even with our daily life especially married life 
where you don't go by those casteism those culture and you know the their ancestors don't i know who was your forefather you yeah, you all people came from this piece of land and that's why you see your behavior is exactly like that brother you know your wife even before marriage that she is from so and so place she is from from so and so caste you had every right to say no i'm not comfortable marrying you why did you marry that point of time she was like an angel now what she is like demon and same with the wives right now you call your uh, husband uncircumcised fellow means what unclean fellow uh, don't i know how your 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 grandfather was a big drunkard grandfather is gone father also gone and you neither got you never got married to either of these guys grandfather or father right you got married to your husband and why would you go and rewind the tape and discriminate so all that i'm trying to tell us today majority of the quarrels are positioned with all the background and all the externals culture and this and that and that is that is where accept the person as he is all right there is a proverb something similar to that not exactly but accept the person as who as who he is right and that's a very good um it's it's sounding little philosophical but then <coughs> you try living by that kind of method that kind of principle your life becomes far more easier right you don't judge a person if you are accepting the person as how he has been manufactured by god that much only is his capacity right that much only is his intelligence that much only is his maturity that much only is his understanding yeah that much only are his capabilities that much only are his talents and don't again criticize him this much only is your talent or what kind of person you are come here not like that god created him that way but then you look in the see always people have positive side negative side is also there positive side is also there also there there are a lot of talents which that brother has you may not have for example he is extremely patient enough to listen some brothers they may be very feeble they are not very dull very not very sharp or intellectual like you but then they will have such a good patience and tolerance which you may not have correct so always focus on the positive of a person positivity positive side of a person and accept the person as who he is and also accept the negative side that's how he is right if all of us are masters of everything then everybody will become like god imagine right and god always leaves little bit of weaknesses in our flesh and bible acknowledges that in matthew 26:41 the weak the flesh is weak but the spirit is willing spirit is strong flesh is weak the carnal attitude is like that because why the sins of the world the adamic sin is still reigning in our body and all of us have certain shortcomings all of us have struggles all of us have little bit of hardships all of us go through failures all of us go through losses all of us go through all of the, what to say that failure stories we have not only success stories right there may be three success stories but to reach there you may have 30 failure stories which led you to some disasters and tragic losses and incidents like that to reach to that successful point to reach to that point where you are a very successful person in life <laughs> you know it was not easy at all for you <coughs> and that's where i want you to really pay attention to these scriptures because these are the things which people take very lightly and this this because you are taking it very lightly behind your brains always that discriminating attitude yeah discrimination leads to um you know being judgmental right and then when you are judgmental you are actually sitting on the throne of god and judging god alone deserves to judge all of us second corinthians 5:10 and revelation 20:11 to 18 white throne judgment right only he deserves <clears throat> instead we all need to accept the person as how god created him or her let's move on verse number 19 circumcision is nothing and uncircumcision is nothing but keeping the commandments of god is what matters what is important for a person how are you going to prove yourself or how are you going to call yourself as a true child of god or a person who's walking uh and uh, who's walking in the 
according to the will of God, you know, will be determined what you had learned from the Bible and how much you are consciously making efforts to abide in the laws and commandments of God. I told you many times, laws and commandments of God are not uh, given from a traditional perspective, but those are being given to make your life better, to eliminate all the shortcomings, to nullify all the uh, shortcomings and you become like God. You become perfect like God. Matthew 5, 48 says in John 14, 12, Jesus said, you can become like me. You will do things more than I've done. Yeah. You will do things what I've done and more than I've done. What gets you there? <laughs> Not without these laws and commandments. And Jesus lived according to the laws of Moses as an old covenant person without violating a single law until the age of 30. And after that, he start to ele ele elevate this doctrine, elevate the standards by introducing another 1050 commandments, laws and commandments in the New Testament, <coughs> the New Covenant standards. Yeah, and the, 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 that's what makes Jesus very special. It's not that he was teaching and trying to live according to his teachings. No, he taught what he had already practiced and lived by what standards, right? As he was living as an old covenant person, he also was already living as a new covenant person. But when the chance came and the ministerial doors were opened, that's when he exposes to the world. This is how he also lived his life. <clears throat> and he demonstrated this to the, to the believers in Christ, to all his disciples and apostles. That's why it's very, very important to read the Bible carefully and be the doers of the word and not just the hearers. James 4, 8 says, right? Not, not just listening type and getting all the goosebumps and always admiring Peter's and Paul's and all. Live like Peter. Live like Paul. Live like Jesus. That's what Bible calls you for. That's, that's called as the Christian life. That's called as the believer's life, walking in the footprints, in the footsteps of Jesus, be the doer, right? When you abide in the laws and commandments of God, you will not be the judging type. You will be the forgiving type. You will be the compassionate type. You will be the empathizing type. Especially between the husband and wife and wife to husband. And also every one of them, irrespective of any relation or relation, um, um, the role you are playing in your family, this will be your mentality. Verse number 20, let each one remain in the same calling in which he was called. What does it mean? That's what initially I told, no? Husband remain as husbands. Wives, please remain as wives. <laughs> Don't exchange roles, right? Don't delegate your responsibilities to your wife and, and still, you know, from today I will take care of kitchen. You go to work and earn. That doesn't work that way. And God doesn't approve that. And never try doing that because that's not what God actually requires of you. And same thing, right? If you have been called to pastor a church, please remain only in that role. Don't venture in worshiping, you know, worship leader. I also notice sing. Don't get into that. I also can play guitar. Some other person was called for that role. And I'm... Also, uh, uh, you know, I can also do missionary work. What God called for you? Please. Sorry, what God called you for? Please remain within that limits. <clears throat> Why? Because if you do one thing, do it perfectly. Don't do 10 things and mess up all 10. This was the attitude of Peter. To correct him, God had to allow him to be broken. And you know what happened, right? Peter would get in everything. He will be the first guy to react. He will be the first guy to ask questions. He will be the first guy to ask Jesus, permit me, let me also walk on water. And he will be the first guy to drown. <laughs> it was such a comic character. But at the same time, he was chosen leader of the church. And Jesus was very responsible to mold him. Yeah, he was mentoring him. But the guy never paid attention but then finally, Jesus thought, this time you're going to pay attention. Why? Because that caused Jesus his own life. Yeah. 
and last few hours after that jesus is taken away yeah after that he lived 40 days and then after jesus after that jesus is gone because i think peter always had that assurance or confidence ah jesus no he will live with me for another 50 years it's okay he was not understanding the value but then and jesus was always conveying right the son of man is going to be crucified and he's gone third day he will be risen never paid attention that's why he slipped off from his roles and responsibilities he stepped outside his boundaries and he even you know rebuked jesus called him to the side and said jesus i'm not allowing you to be crucified don't ever ex- i mean exceed your boundaries exceed your limits that's exactly what paul is trying to say this is much needed in your spiritual life and also in married life yes i am the head of the home i am dictating you listen no not like that she is your partner she is your better half ask her out of love what do you think this is what i think what do you think and then both of you discuss and then come to a conclusion right and then there may be tensions both of you sit down and sort out the differences yeah and both of you have a role to play yeah that's family that's exactly what paul is saying here in verse number 20 right that each one remain in the same calling in which he was called and spiritual roles also that's why i gave you an example right you are a minister uh, for christ and or your 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 call to do certain ministry stick to that brother don't get de- don't don't get deviated or defocused uh, looking at other churches looking at other pastors looking at other ministers or i also should try something like that no no it's not about talent building right we are not running a corporate god is not called you to build a corporate industry or marketing industry yeah i'm sure you understood verse number 22 verse number 21 we'll be closing in few minutes where you called while a slave do not be concerned about it but if you can be made free rather use it for he who is called in the lord while a slave is the lord's freed man likewise he who is called while free is christ's slave it may sound all easy to understand but it's not very easy but i'll tell this simply right you know what is the definition of grace grace the definition of grace is 1 corinthians 7 21 and 22 i'll explain it you were taken as captive now you were under the captivity of mr devil lots and lots of unwanted um behaviors um, uh, all malpractices and malicious attitude and alcoholic and drug addictions this and that you are you are a slave you are a you are under bondage and then god frees you and then he calls you you accept christ second corinthians 5:17 you are born again all things have passed away i'm new creation of christ and god calls you out of love now you are what you are a freed man of course and this is where you need to really understand one thin line of difference or extended facts that's exactly what i'm trying to tell you here yes and that's exact definition of grace you're freed all things have passed away god doesn't remember the sins anymore hebrews 8:12 you are forgiven you are accepted you are clean you are righteous you are cleansed remission of sins happened jesus himself became propitiation for your sins hebrews 2:17 acts 2:38 1 john 1:7 to 10 1 corinthians 6:20 you are washed by blood no uh, sorry uh, you are washed by the blood of christ you are purchased for a price agreed no problem but how are you handling this grace you will continue to sin and then it's okay brother grace will forgive you he said what what is called as grace no sorry that's not grace actual definition of grace is since you have understood how much it cost for christ you will never misuse grace you will rather honor the grace because it cost so much for my lord to shed his precious blood i am not returning back to that sin for the rest of my life but then we continue getting into new sins new bondages which is fine which are all unexpected unprecedented events because why the devil is prowling lion he moves around 
whom he can devour. 1 Peter 5, 8 says that, right? And and our flesh is also weak. Bible acknowledges and you, you fall for some certain certain sin which you have not done in the past. I'm telling you very clearly, make, make a note of this. You are not repeating the sins of the past. That means you have honored grace, no problem. But then, brother, can't there be any sin in my life? I'm not saying that. There could be new sins, right? Which means what you you are still learning the scriptures. You are a born again believer. You are still learning the scriptures. God is going to help you. God is going to take you through certain experiences of life. And God is going to bring light on all the shortcomings that are hidden. And he's going to bring it out, reveal it to you. And then you confess in the name of Jesus. You repent, reconcile, leave it. Repent, reconcile, leave it. What happens is it's like a progressive event. It's a process, right? And it may take few years for God to get every bad thing that is hidden of you to be completely eliminated, excavate and eliminate. God will bring it out and show it to you, hey, this was inside of you. Come on, let us together drop it off and clean it off. What happens after three, four years, you become like Jesus. Trust me. And you know what? Even after that, when new sins are going to strike or when new temptations are going to approach you or when Mr. Devil is going to attack you through new tactics and all that, you will be able to demolish that weapon even before that weapon could attack you. Even before the temptations could travel right inside of you, you will be so strong spiritually that you are able to destroy it. You understand how grace works? Why? Because you are the slave to Christ. Not as a bonded laborer, not as a person who is going to be tortured, bed to bruised, crucified. Jesus never crucifies anyone. Jesus never enforced. But then it's, a, it's called as the, you are a you're slave to the love of Christ. Correct? You are bonded with that love of Christ. The love of Christ breaks you. The, the, the compassion, the passion that Christ had for all of us while yet we were sinners, he died for us, John 3.16 says and the love of the father that he had spoken about Jesus as early as Genesis 3.15. These are the things which breaks you as how the love of Christ that he had for Peter broke him when he saw Christ being bonded there. Bounded, sorry, bounded in chains and he was about to be crucified and executed. That broke him. And all these days it was only remaining as a fairy tale. He was thinking like, no, it may not happen. I think Jesus is telling maybe it will happen after 50 years. Let's see. And he never believed completely. Because why? Peter was an old covenant person and he didn't have any understanding. Poor Peter. And a very innocent guy, right? Don't go hard against Peter. He was very innocent, very honest. But he loved his master. But you saw how he wept when he saw that, oh my goodness, Jesus, what you said, today I realize I'm really sorry. Forgive me. And he ran like an insane in the middle of the streets, weeping bitterly, Bible says. That's what breaks you, beloved. And that's when you have accepted the grace. And when you have accepted grace, you say no to the sins of the past. Right? And how it is going to be translated um, to this married life is, since God forgave you and accepted you as a person who you were before and he forgot the past, remember your sins no more. God says, don't you think the same grace you need to extend it to your wife? Don't you think, wives, you need to extend the same grace which God had shown towards you as uh, being means of through means of compassion? Don't you think you should extend it to your husband? Of course, he might have committed certain sins. He might have come, done something crazy. Or your wife might have done something incorrect. By what measure God forgave you and accepted you? By what measure grace accepted you, you, you should definitely show that to your husband and wife. And similarly, you cannot take advantage of grace. I told you, right? You cannot repeat the sin. That's Nicoltean's teaching. Where grace, uh, sin multiplies, grace multiplies. Nonsense. That's a lie of the devil. Where grace multiplies, sin will be nullified. That's the concept Bible talks. So what happens is, yeah, your husband is very merciful, forgave you. Therefore, you should be very careful next time, right? You shouldn't, first of all, repeat the sin or get into similar crazy things in life. Consult him. Learn your lessons. 
be very shrewd be very smart be very loyal be very faithful be very sincere be diligent above all watch and pray bible says be diligent watch around ah the family becomes like heaven don't you think so your home becomes like heaven whoever walks inside your home they will see christ attitude reflecting peace of god reflecting my peace i i give it to you not the peace which the world gives people will be able to see that john 14 27 in your home what a peace man your neighborhood will witness what a couple what a family right likewise he who is called while free is christ slave yeah before you accepted christ you lived your life in your own way according to the wiles of the devil according to the demons according to the unclean spirits that reigned in you ruled in you but the blood of jesus had cleansed and holy spirit came in and he kicked out now you are the slave to the love for christ you are not a bonded laborer but paul always calls himself as prisoner in christ i like that why he is bound to the mercies and grace that christ had shown on him and this is my chance to repay that right repay that with through my ways of living my life and the respect and the honor that i could show back to him this is my chance and i'm not going to let go that chance easily that's what it means verse 23 and 24 we read and we close you were brought at a price ah 1 corinthians 620 also says the same right you were purchased for a price jesus shed his blood and redeemed you 1 corinthians 620 now likewise 1 corinthians 723 says you were brought at a price do not become slaves of men brethren let each one remain with god in that calling in which he was called with that we close this law of marriage session right i think it was a beautiful discussion so far i think this is like four or five hours of teaching on this law of marriage uh, you shared it with your friends and relatives or young people uh, who are getting married or who got newly married also it's very very important for them to go through these teachings may god bless us heavenly father we want to thank you for this wonderful time and opportunity lord thank you for teaching us so very clearly and help us to apply these principles in our life help us to be the doers and not just the hearers of thy holy word in jesus name we pray amen god bless you subscribe to our channel get access to all our playlist share it with everyone be an instrument in the hands of god to spread his holy word and also support our ministries pray for us every day all the time asking us 10 seconds you remember me and pray for me pray for our ministries and be with us god bless you